Yo! Yes, it's Peter Elgar from Brentwood Essex here, the old film bloke who is another very happy bunny because I've been given two more wonderful gifts and I'm going to show the first set today. And this is a famous Asahi Pentax S1A from 1965, complete with instruction book loads of instructions of course I know that very well because the story is I had one of these years ago when I was a photographer at University College London my boss let me spend some taxpayers money and I introduced pen tax to the department and did some wonderful work also came with it a green filter and it was filthy so I had to unscrew with a lens with a lens uh, thingy, what you call a lens spanner, that ring, and I got into it and get all the dirt and filth off and clean the glass. It's wonderfully clean now, so I use that. And we also have with it a 300 millimeter Vivitar lens, quite heavy, wonderful. And it's a, called an auto telephoto 300mm Vivitar 5.6 fixed aperture with the M42 thread, of course. And I use that. And then we had a Kimura. Now, in the 1960s, Kimura came out. And they did some quite sharp lenses, but... I was silly enough, I bought a 135mm like this one. This is a 135, 3.5 maximum aperture. But I went mad and I got a 135 f2 maximum aperture. I thought, oh, I could do some wonderful picture, but it was useless at f2. It was so soft. It was unbelievably soft. That was a big mistake buying the f2. 135 lens, but this one because it's restricted to 3.5 It's amazingly sharp and it, I've done picture with it at 3.5 and it is sharp It's just got a strange cap on the end and it's got a strange fitting Which I thought well, do I take that off? No, it's part of the Part of the lens is a strange lens fitting which is probably removable with these screws here but it does screw into the camera there with the M42 mount so that came with it as well and a posh lens hood marked Kimura which screws on like that so um, we won't talk too much about these because the main thing is the wonderful Pentax now as I said this this was bought 19 65 I've got the bill of sale here the gentleman who died bought it on the 11th of March 1965 for the Pentax S1A body of the lens he bought 72 pounds 10 shillings a carrying strap 7 shillings and a, a custom case which I didn't get the case with it was 6 pounds 17 shillings and sixpence and he also got an Invercone for his Western, Western meter and that was, that was and a Western meter was £15. I've got the Western meter as well, but the, the needle sticks. So the actual camera was £72, 10 shillings in 1965. Now when I got my one at University College, I think it must have been slightly earlier than that because this one came with a Super Takuma F2 55mm lens. The one I got at University College came with an Auto Takuma 2.2. And you had to cock the lens like that and hope to open it. That was an earlier lens, but this one you don't. The lens is almost fully open to focus and stops down when you press the shutter. So, before I show you what happened, did it work? Well, 
I wound it on and in the shutter it was sticking. I thought, oh dear, slow speed, all sticking. What can I do? So I got my JIS screwdriver and I took off the base plate. Now this is my JIS screwdriver, the proper one, because it had four little screws and it had um it, w it wasn't the cross point through there was the ordinary one with slotted screws four screws one two three and four took them off and this is what the base plate looks like and what i did i got a very small brush and dipped it in oil and i gently touched these cogs and levers and right down inside i got down inside there with a little bit of oil and all, all the moving parts these, you don't touch those two things, that is the adjustment for the focal plane shutter. Don't touch those and don't touch this because that closes and it is the flash contact thing which closes to fire your flash. So don't get any oil on that, so I didn't touch that, only the cogs and these moving cogs here. So as you, I'll show the action. As you wind it on, what's the action? All the little levers all move and all the little cogs all go around. <laughs> Wonderful, isn't it? These Japanese things. You press the shutter. Oh! We'll put it, on a, put it on a longer speed. You see, it all works now. And one second is actually one second. It all works very sweetly. Here we go. One second. One, here we are, one second. See, I can count. One second, yeah, one second is one second. It wasn't before, it was sticking. So that's, that's what it looks like inside and all being lubricated with a very small amount of oil and all little cogs, so it all works now. So, what we've got to start at the front, we have many, there's no delayed action. We have a FP for focal plane flash bulbs and an X socket to put a flash in with a lead but there's no hot shoe because they weren't invented and it's not an electronic shutter camera it's a clockwork so there's no there's no battery in it at all no battery the lens is removable with your M42 thread now I've another little tip I put a minute amount of grease around there just wiped it a minute amount it, it comes off lovely now the mirror was all dirty, so I very gently got into it there and cleaned the mirror. The uh, foam seal inside looks good, didn't touch that. There's the, there's the pin which bangs on the little bar and that stops down your lens to the aperture that you've chosen. You see, there we are. It bangs on the little bar and it stops down. There was a little bit of damage here. The gentleman must have dropped it into the thread. Look, a little bit of damage. And as you focus, the rear element moves outwards. And as you focus, the rear, it comes back again. Then on the Super Takuma, you have this A and M setting. Now, A means automatic diaphragm. Doesn't mean automatic exposure. No, no automatic exposure. It means automatic diaphragm. M means manual diaphragm. So that's on. That's now on M, and it stopped down to 5.6. Close it down a bit. It's now F11, and a smaller, smaller hole because it's F11. So then this becomes inoperable. If you put that to A, now as the camera shutter goes, the little bar bangs on that and stops it down to f11, your snap is taken and it opens up again. Beautiful smooth Pentax grease, unlike the Russian grease, beautiful smooth and it goes down to 0.45 of a metre, one and a half feet and in maximum aperture is f2. So We'll have a look. Is it sharp? That is a fantastic 
sharp blends. That is a very good Super Takuma. I was amazed. I took a series of pictures of F2 and I took, it, took some of the yellow, yellow green filter as well. Here's one I took across the road with Toby Carvery in Brentwood. That was F2 and I used the yellow green filter to see how it came out on the as well and the definition here well it is all lenses are sharp in the middle but this is f2 and it's pin sharp the resolution of the fine detail but it extends across to the edges all the railings here the detail here the brickwork on there at f2 is still sharp and um this is a bit clogged up here, but the detail, the amazing sharpness, I'm absolutely amazed. Full aperture, F2. So that is a very good example of the Super Takuma. Because I must admit, in that period, there were some real dogs of Pentax lenses which came through the quality control. And I got, I got one, I got a 35mm F2 SMC to come up with, a real dog of a lens. Resolution was terrible. Well, it um, managed to get through quality control, this one. So, you've seen what the clockwork looks like inside. We'll have a look at the top now. Well, we, you've seen the winding on mechanism. Yeah, shutter. This is a frame counter, it automatically counts up. We don't have to set, don't have to shut it automatically goes back to naught when you open the door of the camera. This is a little signal here which is black when your snap is taken but when it's ready to take it turns to red. So that's a good indication that you are ready to take and your shutter is cocked. You can put in a standard cable release in there. You set your shutter speed against the little black line and it goes to 500th, but it goes past 500th to this unmarked one there. And it works. Does it work? No. On this particular camera, it doesn't. But on the S1A I had in University College, that unmarked one was about a thousandth of a second. But this one, when I show you, the shutter doesn't work. It doesn't open properly. So it, they haven't calibrated it, you see. To keep the price down, that only goes to 500. But you've got T for time exposure, and you've got B for brief time exposure, and you have a slot for the Pentax slip-on exposure meter. So I'll show you the shutter. You open the back here. Here's your Pentax focal plane shutter. We'll put it on a T for time. Press it, and that stays open all the time now, as long as you like. It doesn't cost anything on electrics because there's no batteries. So to get rid of it, you've got to move that to close it. On, on, on brief time, you've got to hold this down yourself with a cable release or your finger for as long as you want. You can count the second and let it up. Look, that's brief time. Here's the action of the shutter at a slower speed now, half a second, you see? It's quite accurate, being lubricated. I'll show you the 500th. 500th, now it does let the light through. If you point to a bright light, you can see the slit. But you put it to the unmarked speed, and that shutter doesn't really open at all. I've tested that, you can't use it on this one. So your film goes in there, pull it across, into your slot, wind it around here, get your slot. Where's the little slot? I missed it. Oh, there's a slot. Close your camera back. Lock it, complete the wind, fire off one, wind it onto the next one. You'll get your extra frames. Now this is a film type reminder dial, which I, I never use. That says 200 at the moment, 200 ASA, black and white, but it just doesn't do anything, it reminds you. And R 
The green R means rewind your film in that direction of the arrow after you've taken all your snaps. So there we are, that's, a, that's what I did, rewinding my film. And um, it's very simple, so all manual, you've got to remember, all manual ex exposure and um, manual focusing, but when you get it, the lens on, maybe a little bit of grease on that mount, look how easily that lens goes on now. Beautiful machine and a very grateful gift. So the next one I shall show you will be a Nikon F65. So keep watching this channel folks for the next beautiful gift I was given and see what we can talk about that one. Thanks for watching this time. See you again shortly.